All right. So, um, today, uh, we our guest is uh, Ms. Miroslava Mala, and she is a World Wushu Champion. And uh, today, our topic is the Wushu Intermoy Industry, um, application of Wushu techniques in movies. Um, I, I'm, am I taking the word here? <laughs> That's it. I guess we are going to start, right? Um, so the Zoom should start at three and we're going to be on time. Whoever is late is late. No problem. Join later. Okay. So my name is Miroslava. Uh, I'm from Ukraine. I've been practicing Wushu for 15 years. And today we're going to uh have a look at the movie industry right and have a look at the wushu techniques that are um was applied in industries in movie industry in movies specifically and uh, will be i guess applied in future or how they can be influenced uh how can they influence the performance uh, of the actor action actor in the movie right uh, i did a few a small presentation um for the beginning, I want to uh, I want to ask you if there is any problems with the audio or some lags or something. Please type it in the messenger messenger so we can fix it immediately. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I will do a screen share uh, with you, and uh, we will go through the presentation, and then we will start practicing. Is that okay with everyone? Okay, I guess it is. Um, Thank you, Sally. Um, hmm. Okay. So here we are. That's the presentation. Is it visible for everyone? Hopefully it is. Uh, so yeah, Wushu into the movie industry, application of Wushu techniques in movies. Uh, here on the right corner, we can see all those famous uh, awesome dudes uh, who was inspiring us to practice sometimes or just it was so pleasurable to see them on the screen and enjoy their performance. Uh, most of them uh, either were practicing Wushu or have like strong Wushu background and it's on the background that they have, right? So uh, let's have a look at the next one. Oh yeah, 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 I forgot completely. Sorry, have a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for the beginning, we will have a, a greeting gesture that we use in Wushu, which is basically means uh, that um, I'm respecting that you're here and hopefully you're respecting that I'm here and uh, we are here to share knowledge and uh, to find out something new today, right? So greetings to you guys. Thank you for taking your time and coming to this Zoom call. And um, we will begin. So brief introduction. Um, on the left side, you can see the picture from a World Wushu Champion in, uh, Championship in 2013 in Kuala Lumpur, where um, these three girls, which uh, Anna Derbinova, Tatiana Kondrativa, and uh, myself, we won the World Wushu Champion in the category Dui Len. Uh, on the left side from us, uh, um, uh, Chukanov Oleg, who is uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, Wushu, Ukrainian Federation, Ukrainian Wushu Federation president. And on the right side uh, is uh, our coach, uh, Maxim Moroz, uh, who is uh, uh, president of Zaporozhian uh, Wushu Federation, which is uh, my local city. And uh, we are one big family, so which is awesome. And uh, that's on the right side, it's, um, um, Shot from the movie I was participating, a uh, short uh, movie for virtual reality, uh, where you can see it's almost gumbu, right? For those who are practicing wushu, it's almost gumbu. And this is what they wanted in the shot. Uh, this is what we will talk about later, because uh, all the things that I was learning in wushu, they are uh, super uh, useful. And especially from the point, uh, from the perspective of body awareness, uh, because the more you know your body, the more you can use it, and the more aware you are uh, of it in the moment of action, uh, the better it is uh, for you to perfect it in the moment of pressure, which is either competition or um, performing in front of the camera. 
um, wushu movies, uh, basically for me, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a perception, it's a fusion of wushu as a military art, which is originally wushu is, right? And wushu as a martial sport. Um, basically, uh, wushu was born as an um, military art, right? For the purposes of protection, for the purposes of uh, um, attack, uh, defense, whatever. And then uh, now we know wushu as a sport, which is for the purposes, I mean, if you are talking about wushu daolu, which I was doing, um, it's for the purposes of performance, right? For the purposes of uh, aesthetic of the move, uh, for the perfection of uh, one's body, for perfection of the move, um, which basically uh, the military art is more practical application, right? Uh, where the martial sport, as we know, Wushu Taolu now, is uh, more like a performance art. And then um, I found the movies, Wushu movies, they are kind of fusion of, bo of both, because for the camera, you have to have nice performance and it should look good. But at the same time, it should be as real as possible, right? So uh, here on the screen, we can see uh, one picture is the uh, old picture of military training. Another one is a picture of group performance from uh, Taolu competition uh, on the right and right uh, upper angle. And then in the middle, we have two uh, scenes from one is from Kill Bill and another one is uh, one of the Bruce Lee movies. Um, you can see the similarities are here and uh, it's uh, really uh, fascinating when you start looking at the action movies, uh, even not like wushu or kung fu related, but like uh, modern action movies. There are patterns that exist all the time and that there are um, very similar to everything that I, I was doing at least in wushu taolu. So it's super um, close and familiar for me. And next picture is a military unit practice on the left side. Uh, you can see the Wing Chun patterns here. Uh, I'm myself didn't practice Wing Chun uh, before and uh, but at the same time we all are familiar with it at least from the Ip Man which is a very famous movie right so on the right side you can see the references from the movies uh, uh, the Grandmaster, the Feast of Legend, the, the Ip Man, the Master Z all of them were using uh, these techniques uh, which is uh, uh, related to each other which is uh, in my mind is like completely um, complete fusion of, of uh, history and modern uh, with the uh, transition the wushu into something that is inspired from the screen rather than um, being necessary for the attacking or defensive uh, modes. Um, next one is a few positions that we have in wushu, right, which is uh, sui bu. I'm sorry for my pronunciation, but it's just uh, the um, empty step basically right on the left side the athlete in the left uh, upper corner performs the position and then we see on the uh, left uh, uh, lower corner um, we have the shot from the matrix right from the training room where now was training and uh, uh, we see the same position but adjusted for the movie screen which is um, maybe less perfectionist uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, adjusting it to the real situation. And then on the right side, uh, we see the same uh, athlete is performing uh, stance gunbu. And then um, there is a shot from the movie Equilibri Equilibrium. And if you will see the position of his hips and the way how his legs are positioned, it's basically gunbu, but up much, much higher, right? Um, and the same, we have the application of, uh, of these two moves together. Um, which are used mostly like in um, Jackie Chan movies, right? In, in old Kung Fu movies, especially. And actually in those movies, they uh, have the stances quite low and uh, it's, it's super cool to watch it because usually on, in Wushu Taolu, we perform it by ourselves, uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know, fight with a shadow, right? Uh, being in the moment. And then when you need to transition it to the, um, doing a bit, doing it with the partner it's a bit different uh and uh, we with girls we faced it uh, when we were doing um doing land, land training right this is where you're not responsible only for yourself anymore you need to maintain the um the rhythm uh the um, uh, speed of the partner and it's all should be balanced and uh, equal to each other uh here we can see the uh, all the Henan Shaolin uh, painting, uh, which are representing Kung Fu, and then uh, some old shots of uh, the masters practicing it. Uh, and um, 
more modern shots of the same Kung Fu monks and then their transition into the movies, which is uh, um, 1978, like those old Kung Fu, old style uh, Kung Fu movies and uh, Rush Hour, which is more recent one. And all of them have the similar, the similar position, like, yeah, thank you for... Uh, am I the one who doing this stuff with the with the with the painting? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so this all these patterns, especially uh, considering the stances, right? Uh, we can see how the body, like of Jackie Chan, for example, on the uh, right lower picture is uh, positioned, right? Uh, the the pictures on the left from uh, Invincible Shaolin uh, shot, uh, the, all the, the body positions are um, basically the same, like they were in the old old times, right? And uh, here are some sh here uh, are some shots from um, a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon on the left side, and then uh, their uh, equal um, uh, examples from Wushu Taolu, which is the upper picture is a girl performing Tai Chi, and then uh, the lower picture is a guy performing uh, Gun, uh, but the stance is uh, more or less similar, and uh, uh, we can see the patterns. Uh, are existing everywhere. The only thing is uh, uh, on the uh, Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, uh, they have um, a stylistic uh, adjustment to the uh, purposes of the movie and purposes of the practice, uh, purposes of the performance uh, and uh, presenting the character. Um, yeah, yeah, same thing, but different. Uh, so uh, we can see these shots from uh, Dwei Lian uh, competition. Um, both of them, like one on the left and one on the uh, downside. And then this is the scene from uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, where they were using similar um, uh, similar moves, uh, which are very popular routine in Wushu Taolu in uh, Dwei Lian, uh, category, uh, where uh, there is a lot of times uh, where people perform with the spear and uh, without any weapon with the spear and uh, uh, double sword with the spear and uh, uh, Zen as here, but it's not that the um, um, fusion of Wushu Tao Lu into the movie, I'm like, whoa, that looks so much cooler because like camera angles, the way how they shoot all of this, of course, it's a bit different from uh, Wushu uh, performing Wushu Tao Lu on the carpet because uh, once you stand in the same position and you just did see whole picture, it's completely different from um, making the uh, camera move uh, uh, and then making the move of the action of the characters. And then, uh, presented together, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like making a, um, making something delicious, you know, when you take a bit of uh, ice cream and then put chocolate on top, Mwah, so good. Um, then we go the same um, uh, parallels with the Wushu performance on the left side. And then uh, we have a Black Widow, which is more recent and more modern action, right? On the right side. And then we have um, a performance of the Dwellen on the left side, uh, on the lower uh, picture. You see the guy, um, I don't know, I cannot point somehow. Uh, you see the guy who is lying down uh, uh, on his stomach, right? This is the way how uh, athlete usually falls uh, during dueling, uh, which is protecting the body and uh, making it as real as possible. And then on the right side, uh, the Neo from Matrix, uh, this is the way how he fall uh, during the training um, uh, on the floor, uh, same, same. So uh, it also refers to the fact that uh, a lot of uh, Chinese movies and a lot of uh, um, uh, like Asian movies, yeah, they um, have um, action teams who have background in Wushu, right? And then of course it would lead to the fact that uh, a lot of uh, things from Wushu would be applicable into the movies and uh, would use it, will be used in the, in, in the movies. At the same time, uh, they are still adjusting uh, for the purpose of uh, making it as real as possible. 
and uh, style matters, right? So we can see the um, uh, on the first picture, the nail stops bullets, bullets with the John basically, right? The same as we learned in Wushu, the perfect John position. And then on the next picture, he stops it a bit with the more relaxed way and uh, with the different style of uh, Kung Fu application. And then we can imagine how, for example, Black Widow would stop it maybe with the fist, right? Or how Donnie Yen with, in Yip Man would stop it with the different position of Wing Chun hands or um, Chu Chi Ling from uh, uh, Kung Fu Hustle would stop it like this, right? So it's all depend on the style of the movie and uh, uh, what uh, the director wants uh, to see from, from the uh, what the feeling they want to present from the movies, right? Um, it all depends on the production and the value they want to bring to people, right? And uh, some movie picks um, that are... What's going on? What's going on? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah. just, does, does anyone painting on the screen? Because uh, for now, the, the, the whole screen is uh, with full of the red, red, uh, red line. I don't know who does this. Yeah, me neither. I removed it, but... Um... I don't know, it's very weird because it's definitely not me. Honestly. All right, no matter who, no, please don't do not do this again. Thank you. Yeah, that was. Okay, uh, so the last slide is the uh, movie peaks and um, uh, yeah, just have a note of it. And uh, if you ever want to watch it and maybe spot something that is uh, um, like, practice a bit, right? Spotting the moves that are familiar for you if you practice Wushu or if you ever uh, seen something, right? Uh, just a uh, good exercise for understanding more deep and watching the movie, not for the purpose of entertainment, but for the purpose of learning and uh, analyzing a bit. Um, so yeah, there are like uh, of some of them. Uh, for me personally, I really love the Grandmaster. I really love Hero. Uh, they have a lot of wushu, especially with the, especially hero with the weapon, right? Crouching tiger, hidden dragon as well. Um, it just, I don't know, it's super beautiful. And uh, especially for wushu taolu practitioners, it's just like uh, a bit of dream picture of uh, what we used to do in the competition. Um, yeah, that was small share of um, how, how, how do I view all of it? And then how, uh, yeah, okay. uh, how it is, uh, how it is interesting uh, when it comes to the uh, inserting uh, wushu techniques into the movies, right? And um, thank you for your attention. Um, if there is any questions, we will come back to them after uh, our small practice, which will take around like 40 minutes, I guess. Um, we will do few, we will do warm up for sure, because this is the essential thing. And then we will uh, uh, do few, um, uh, uh, we will learn few moves and how to, how they, uh, they are different from what we used to do during training and uh, what it, might look like uh, in some type of the movies, okay? Uh, I hope everybody have uh, enough space to place themselves somewhere where it's much more comfortable than sitting. And uh, we will do some warms up exercises, while and um, learn something new, right? Okay? Um, I'll give you a few minutes to get ready, okay? And we will start. Hi, Mara, just remind you, oh. uh, you may cancel the, yes, the uh, screen sharing. So everybody I can see. Stop sharing, oh, okay, yeah. Thank oh, you yeah. so much.
Uh, no ours. Technologies. Ah, okay. gang. Okay, I really, really, I really, really hope we are ready. And uh, let's try to do it in a way where I'll be visible. <laughs> okay, um, so we will start with our warm up. Warm up. We will start with warm up, like we usually were doing during the show, uh, with small adjustments. Uh, because, for example, on set usually there is not enough time to warm up, or uh, the actor or the the stunt performer they would sit for a long time, right? And then um, they would immediately be needed on the set. So just to warm up the most essential parts, uh, which are uh, might be uh, damaged uh, most easily, right? It's uh, Definitely, we start with our neck, because in in uh, any uh, action performers uh, performance, there is a lot of uh, pressure goes for the neck. Either it is reaction right from the punch, or it is a, um, a quick uh, reaction to the action and uh, move into the action. Right. So it's not going to be like, oh, oh my God, we're going to fight now. No, it's going to be like, I'm ready to fight you. Right. And uh, this is where. Uh, things are start getting crazy because if it's um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, times if you do the same action then you're gonna have sore neck right so we definitely need to warm up this one with the simple and very very slow and gentle moves we're trying to reach the with the ear our shoulders that was our basic uh, warm-up in wushu during practicing we go with the with the circular moves all of the warm-up for the neck needs to be gentle no rushing no trying to make it as quick as possible like this and go we need to warm up these muscles we need to make sure that these muscles are flexible enough for us to react right this is a very important thing to go with your chin to the shoulder as well because if you are talking about performance on screen, then a lot of reactions need to be done, right? When you get punched into the face, this is what's happening. And if we react very, very slow, uh, it's not going to give us effect that uh, camera needs. In Wushu, for example, when we were doing performance uh, um, of routine, Taolu routine, uh, the neck motion is also very important because it adds to the entire feeling of the of the performance, right? So we finish with this one right then we go for the shoulders for all the joints um so shoulders can be warmed up like this in wushu it would be more bigger circular moves right um on set i usually don't do this it's just like this is more than enough yeah we go in front we go backwards we try to add a bit of motion of uh, our um core right so if we uh, bend ourselves enough like kind of squeeze ourselves uh, ourselves we will feel how all of these muscles they get very very warmed up and then we pull ourselves up so we warm up these muscles we warm up a bit our core and our lower back right so you can feel how all the all the tension just goes off and this is creates more relaxed position right if you need to do some action whether it is in tallow competition or it is on screen if 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 we are tense like this it's very difficult to do something right either it's wushu or it's a like boxing in right on, on the screen or whatever if here everything is tense it's not gonna good look good it means like you are yeah, it, it will it will look weird. We know it. So um, this will help to relax a bit, right, and be more more easy with the moves. Um, then we will go with our elbows, also simple, right? The, we warm up the joint. So anything that goes uh, for punches, right? The very quick extension, we uh, secure ourselves and uh, make sure this is safe. Uh, we don't want to pop our elbow or something like this. And the same goes for the uh, wrists, right? Definitely warm up wrists. Because, uh, for example, if the choreography goes, the action choreography on set um, is uh, applied to another person, right? 
uh, meaning you need to pretend you punch the person, right? Who knows? Maybe the distance is not good or something went off and you accidentally punched like this, right? It's very big tension on the wrist. Um, let's say, thanks God, you didn't break anything, but the wrist would be sore and maybe it will cause um, future problems. We didn't need this either. So we warm up our wrists either like this, like this, like we did in Wushu. We just uh, take a palm, right? Uh, place it um, this side up, right? Then we take our, it's a right palm. We take our left our, uh, hand, we place it on top like this. And then we just try to pull and stretch this part. Yeah? Yeah, nice. And we do the same for the left one. Okay, that's good. You can do some waves just to get mood right. Yeah, very good. Very nice. It actually, you know, it can be done everywhere. Like if you stay in the line and you're waiting to go into the bank, uh, make your account or whatever, you can do this, right? No problem. Nobody. Yeah, it's very nice. Okay, now then we go to our lower body, uh, to our core. This is the most important. I mean, not most, but it's one of the important uh, because uh, a lot of twists happening, right? A lot of bending backwards forward happening and if this part is not warmed up oh that's uh, that might cause very bad consequences right so for this um i first start with the twists right like this first we will start very gentle very slow then we can add a bit of wideness so we will open up this arm open up this arm right yeah trying to reach backwards as much as possible Usually then I continue with punches, like very, very wide punches. So the, the twist of the body is still happening. And actually the main, uh, main um, focus goes not on the punches, but on this twist altogether. Yeah, very nice. Okay, and then after that also, we can add a bit of twist with the, with the knee up. So basically the same that we were doing at the very beginning, but then we add, um, how to say, so if you go to the right side, we add right knee up, right? And then we get back. If we get, go to the left side, if we twist to the left side, we add left, uh, left knee up, right? And like this, we just warm up a bit more. Yeah, nice. Then we go to the stretches, like uh, to the warm up like this just to this, bend into the sides. We can put our arm up, we can put our arm on side, we can put two arms on side, depend on uh, how, uh, how, uh, how much strength do you have here, because this one is actually a bit of like, oh, can I do too much? Yeah, okay. After that, we go down, uh, we go for the stretch of our hamstrings, right? So this part gets stretched, uh, glutes get stretched, and hamstring gets stretched. So we just go down, trying to touch floor, trying to touch our toes, uh, our chins maybe, knees, wh wherever you feel comfortable. Pace yourself, take your level. If you feel this is the comfortable, then it's comfortable. Try to relax and feel how, how it stretches here. Concentrate on it. Um, make sure that this, is, this is gets what it needs. Yeah, nice. Uh, also, we do a few rounds of uh, the hip warm up. Yeah, nice. For the kicks, it's very important. If we are doing kicks, either it's in Wushu or on set, uh, they, this area is very, uh, very dangerous for injuries like small quick move and it might be pulled or something like muscles might be pulled or joints might be pulled. Okay, after that, we either place our hands on the knees and we do the circular moves in and out, yeah? Or we put our leg up like this and we do circular moves like this, to the right, to the left. Depend whatever you feel comfortable. If you can do it without any support, also nice, we can practice the balance, right? Why not? It's good. If you need support, please use support, no problem. 
everything, whatever works for you is the best, okay? So we feel our body, we know our limits, and uh, we work on it, yeah? A few, a few squats, just to warm up all the area, like muscles, quads, everything. Joints, yeah, nice. And our, my personal most favorite, ankles, because this is what was the most um, dangerous thing during practice in Wushu, because twisting the ankle is like, I don't know, maybe the, the most uh, popular thing to do during competition. I mean, because not during competition, but um, uh, during practicing, right? The, sometimes things happen, and the, in, in my experience, it usually was ankles. So we also can warm up them like this, pulling the leg up, and then just making a circular moves with one and another one. We can do it on the floor, kind of drawing the circle inside and out, right? And then the same we can do with the putting our heels up, right? It can be to the sides or just up and down. Whatever works for you, just make sure that this area is warm and flexible enough, right? So more or less, we finished with the with the straight uh, with the warm up. If you need more stretching, it can go uh, to this type of stretching, like yatlay, right? Just uh, putting the leg on the higher surface and then just trying to bend, trying to touch with the with your forehead or your toe. If not, this is okay. This is okay. No problem. The most important, this area is warmed up. We can go to the side, we can do this, right? So it can be like side stretch and it can be stretch backwards. Yeah, the same goes on another leg. It's all up to you, depend what kind of motion you need to do because like, if, for example, if on set there is only this choreography, then uh, better to spend more time on relaxing this area and less time on legs. If there is some kicks, then of course legs are important and we need a lot of warm up for the legs. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, do punch for the beginning because this is the most simplest and the most used uh, thing in both in Wushu or on set, right? Because like in Wushu, it's for example, gunbu, right? And punch from this position. Yeah, so basically what we need to do, uh, we will uh, not focus now on the stance, but we will maintain our left leg in front and the right leg would be behind. And we will make sure that they are um, a bit wider because we will uh, follow wushu taolu-ish style, right? Um, okay, uh, wushu ish style. So uh, if it would be boxing, then our legs should be closer to each other. Uh, if it's uh, for what we will practice today, then it's better uh, to make it a bit wider and create a bit of more kung fu style. Okay, and um, so the legs would be looking like these, basically. So the kung fu position is like this, right? Where uh, left leg. Left and right, they stand in, in this width, right? Then what we will do, left will go in front and the right will go behind on the same width. And then our hips, they will, they will be for, uh, faced forward, right? We don't open them. This is more yoga style, it's not our thing. So uh, we keep our hips forward like this. And then um, in Wushu Taolu for the competition, it would be low like this where the um, um, first let's see where the hip of the left uh, leg is parallel to the floor where the knee has 90 degree between the hip and chin right this is 90 degree and then uh, the knee doesn't go um let's say the knee doesn't go here the uh, line of the knee doesn't cross our toe, it should be straight above the heel. So this is, should be straight line, okay? And our right leg is behind, uh, completely 
uh, on the floor. So it's not like this. It's not like this. Okay, it's completely on the floor. Yeah. So uh, for Wushu Taolu, it would be super low. For movies like we were seeing in the, some screenshots from the movie scenes, it would be a bit more higher, right? Like this. But still, the position is the same, more or less. Okay. Okay. And then what to do with our arms? Uh, let's uh, go for the basics, which is our two fists. We know how to form the fist, right? We have our uh, open palm, and then we just fold it together like this. Doo -doo -doo. We fold it like this, and then we close it with the big finger, right? Okay, cool. So we have two of them. We don't do this, okay? No, no, no. So we, we, we hold it strong, okay? We put both of them to, the, to our hip uh, bones over here. You can, you can touch them, you can feel them. There should be like two bones, right? You put them here. Depend on the style. Sometimes uh, they put fists all the way here for the purpose of uh, style adjustments. Up to you, honestly, up to you. You can hold it here or here for the purposes of performance, either Wushu Taolu or on the uh, action scene. Uh, it will depend on the style you choose, okay? So let's uh, choose for yourself. I'll go for the hip bones. So two fists are here, hold tightly. Our elbows, not like this, okay? They are facing backwards. Yeah, and make sure your uh, shoulders are not up. They are relaxed and they're down, okay? From here, all we need to do is, since our left leg in front, usually it goes like left leg, right arm, or other way around, right? So we don't, mm, not always, but, most of the times uh, uh, it goes different leg and arm, right? Or opposite leg and arm. So from here, we will go with the right fist up, um, strike with the right fist. So from the position uh, near the bone or here, doesn't matter, um, the fist goes slowly straight, right? And then we twist it at the end. Like this, we finish our strike. Yeah. Then we will add a bit of uh, motion with the, our body. So if we, if you do just the fist, it will look like this. Make sure your elbow goes uh, close to the body, okay? Yeah, yeah. If we add a bit of hip movement at the end, like, like small cherry on the desert, right? This will happen. Yeah, so one more. Our position, have to have balance for us. It should be a basis for our movements, right? So, but at the same time, it shouldn't be like a rock. It should allow us a flexibility. So that's the thing that um, sometimes get, like I get confused sometimes too, because at certain point we need this balance and flexibility, but from the other side, we need the fastness and lightness of our position, okay? That's what we need to uh, keep in mind all the time and try to practice it over and over again until we feel it, because I honestly don't know how to explain it. Maybe there is more scientific ways to explain it, but for now it's all about practice and feeling your own way, yeah? So from here, we're facing the, with the hips uh, forward, but at the same time, we add the motion of rotation, not from uh, up to down, right? But from the side to the side. Makes sense, right? Yeah, nice. Okay, that's not bad. So we can do it with the twist of like standing, well, facing forward and then rotating to the position. But for now, I would like you to, to do just from the position, meaning we have already position with our hips uh, uh, facing uh, straight forward, right? Kind of gunbu position. Like this, is visible. So not, not straight, like this, but rotating in the gunbu position. And from here, we make a punch. Yeah, nice. If you will do a few punches on the same spot, that might happen too. So we will go one, two. Nice, one, two. We maintain, for now, let's maintain our hip 
stable because this thing is um, a, bit, a bit tricky now, especially through the Zoom. Uh, let's just keep it straight, keep it firm, okay? Keep our balance. Our legs are uh, in more flexible position rather than steel uh, rock, okay? So we go on one, two. We keep our elbow close to our body, okay? And we're rotating our fist at the very, uh, at the very end of the strike. One, two, one, two. Try a few times, try to feel the body, try to feel if something is off, try to ask yourself why it is off, like why does it feel not comfortable? Nice. So basically for Kung Fu movies, this would be the case, like that this how it will be done for like very, very old school or very, very stylish uh, Wushu Kung Fu movies, right? For uh, movies uh, which have like more modern flavor or uh, will have some, um, how to say, not completely Kung Fu style, but will have a flavoring of it, right? Uh, for those movies, there might be a variations. It could be like, they can go like super low and with the, with the punch go up and continue the move, right? It's depend on like what's going on around. Let's say, for example, we go super low in the position of uh, uh, Gunbu, like it's in Wushu, right? And then from this position, once we finish the fist, uh, the, the strike with the fist, we will continue with the right leg. We will step forward for the purpose of transitioning into another move. So once more. Let's get into position of uh, Bumbu, which is low, lower than we did before. Yeah, okay, our fists are here. We make a punch, we make a punch, and then we transition together with the punch. Okay, so we need to finish the punch first, okay? So punches, we do the punch, we finished it, and then we only start moving, okay? It doesn't go together. Because if it's go together, we lose the power of the punch and we lose the purpose of the punch, right? So if you do it together like this, the move is lost. What we need to do here, we, will, we need to transition one move into another one, meaning the punch go transition into the move of the legs, of the meaning steps, right? So one more. We do the punch and then we step forward. Punch with the right arm. We do the punch and step forward. Okay, one more. Punch, step. Oh, yeah, nice, nice, getting better. We go one more, punch and step forward. Basically what should happen, and this is what we were doing in Wushu Tao also, it's like somebody kind of pulling you there. So move doesn't just stop here and then we make your steps, right? It got, uh, this is the thing about Wushu Taolu as well, the same like an action choreography. Um, moves get smooth and they get uh, like flow, um, flow of the move get established. Uh, we can call it um, move, flow, we can call it rift, whatever it is. Because if we do this and then we stand up and go, the rift get broken. So. Here, what we need to do is we need to finish one move. And at the split second when the move is finishing, we have to transition into another one. A bit, uh, the punch a bit earlier. One more, punch finished. And then transition into the move. E, nice. So here is very important is uh, our uh, lower body, right? This is what I'm talking about, not being a still a rock here. It should be a very flexible position and we need to be ready to move in any given moment, right? So if we are super still here and super like rock-ish, right? We, are, we will be not able to move smoothly in the same level. It would be like, oh my God, I need to stand up. Uh -huh. So now I need, to, I need to give a step. It all takes time and it all uh, ruins the rhythm of the move. So here, what we need to do, we need to understand what is the balance we have in our lower body, right? Because like if you, for example, if you stay in marble, right? 
the, our balance is in the middle. Once we, we move here, the balance move towards the right leg more, right? We can feel it. Once we move more to the left one, the balance go, balance go to the left one. And the right is like more weightless. It, there is less, less uh, volume here. Meaning is like this transition of the balance, this is what helps you to, be, to get a movement flow, which is great for the movies and which is great for Bushu Taolu, right? Because once we have this one, that's easier to make a step. We don't need to go up when the balance is somewhere here and trying to make step with this leg, right? It's difficult. So what we need to do, we need to free this leg. So it's, it's free to go whenever it wants, right? It's easier. It's easier to step. It's easier to make a kick. It's easier to even to jump kick, right? So the position of the, of the lower body should be base and light at the same time. And the position of the uh, upper body uh, depend on the most that we need. Um, that's about it for the for the punch. And uh, the other one, uh, that's my personal favorite because recently I was doing some uh, uh, Muay Thai <laughs> and uh, I really, really love like elbows that they have, right? Elbows and knees. In Wushu, we have Din Zhou, right? Which is move like this. Uh, usually it's also uh, get used with the, with the Gungu, which is... Uh, this, if I remember right, yeah, yeah. So we go in the depend on the move, though. Okay, if we go to the to the mabu, right, and then from mabu we transition to the gungu, and we make a dinjo. Um, let's forget about positions for now, and focus just on the dinjo. So what happened in here? Uh, we have our uh, elbow bended. Uh, the line of the shoulder is not like this. Okay. It's leveled, it's relaxed. Don't try too hard, we're just learning. The elbow also shouldn't be down. It shouldn't be like that. It should be parallel. It should be one line, right? So one line here and one line between these two. You see, it's, it's leveled. So from here, what happens? Basically, this is happening. It's, it's an elbow strike, right? So if you put it a bit closer, like uh, uh, um, fist, for example, in front of the chest, and then what we do, we just extend it more, yeah? And we try to hit, not backwards, okay? We try to hit forward. So there is somebody on the line with your body. The person is not behind, okay? It's not there. The person is there. This is where we use the power of our body to make uh, the elbow strike even more. In Ushu, we were using the left palm. If you do strike with the right uh, elbow, for example, we use the left pa palm to, yes, to make a uh, strike even more powerful, right? And uh, at the same time, we add a bit of body movement, right? So it's not just strike steady like this, no. We go with the body. We put our body weight, we put the, uh, all the power from the legs, right? Through the hips, through the, all our body, and we put it in one strike. So one more, we have the fist here, we have the elbow, right? We have the left arm here, and this is what will get us nice, beautiful strike. Yeah, nice. So that's the thing as well with the positioning of, uh, of our, uh, our, our uh, lower body. If we make the strike, elbow strike with the step, it's completely different from if we will make it from the spot, right? Uh, so what we need to maintain here is more or less balance, uh, depending on what you want to do, with whom, either it's on set or in wushu routine, uh, you have to adjust all the small details by yourself, which is uh, um, just practice, basically. A bit, a bit every day and it will be fine. So we are doing a few strikes. Let's do together a few strikes on the right elbow. We maintain striking forward, uh, how to say that, forward, parallel to our body. We don't strike. So if you uh, draw the line, if I stay like this um, to the side, of the camera, right? This is where my elbow goes. It doesn't go here, it doesn't go there. Because like this, we, we don't have a line which gives us power. All the power will be distributed there or it will be distributed there. We don't want this, right? We want it straight to the opponent, right? There might be a modification where we need to strike backwards, but it's kind of another story. For now, uh, that's the Dingzhou that we had in, in Wushu, right? And 
it, it's executed like this. And the same goes to the left arm. We have the same fist, but here the right arm, uh, right palm makes the strike power. In Wushu, it should be um, very uh, aesthetically beautiful, right? So um, our fist, not like this, you remember, right? Our, um, our thumb doesn't stick out, okay? It's all firm, it's all beautiful. And then the, we need to make, make sure that this line is also straight, okay? And the palm from the right hand, for example, here, yeah, should be also always uh, stretched. It will always should be tensed like this. Once we are doing something like that, okay, we, it's, it's just, ah, uh, no, it really doesn't work, okay? Yeah. This is what, um, this is applicable for Wushu, right? How it transition to, to the movies on screen. If we are talking about Kung Fu Hustle or any other Kung Fu Kung Fu movies, more or less it would be the same. So they would go low, they would go on the Gun Bu style and then they would strike maybe with some dramatic um, um, head moves, for example, right? Like, oh, and they're like all in the, in the character of uh, being a warrior or being a hero, um, whatever it is demanded by the scene, right? Um, so if you are talking about Kung Fu Kung Fu movies, then it would be um, more or less uh, Wushu, but then added acting on, on the top, and then it would be the camera uh, angles or the cuts, like depend what the director wants from the feeling of the movie, right? If we are talking about uh, some adaptation, maybe, uh, what the variation could be, uh, it could be just strike with the elbow. So we don't use this one. And uh, this uh, arm would be either defending, like something like this. Yeah, by the way, this one is um, more like Wing Chun, I think, adaptation, right? When, when the one arm um, goes uh, on the defense position and then the elbow still strikes. So we don't uh, get additional power, but we have a defense here. Um, there might be, you might uh, hold another opponent with this arm and then strike this one with elbow. Adaptation can be a huge amount, honestly. Uh, the only thing we need to remember that um, our body should move together with the, with the elbow strike. Because if just the elbow strike goes, either it's in Wushu Taolu or in the movies, it's not going to look good because uh, we, we don't see the power, meaning there is no power. Um, we have to just um, keep an eye on it. All the body is one big uh, machine. It's one big uh, performance machine. We cannot just separately make moves uh, thinking it's gonna work. Unless it's in the movie, unless it's very close like this, then it might be working because people don't see much, like they don't see your body, so they see only fist, that will work. But if we are talking about the uh, the whole action choreography or the Taolu performance, then whole body should move as one big machine, one big organism. Uh, okay, and um, let's do one more. We have a bit of time. Uh, one more adaptation with the fist, with the punch. Uh, so first of all, we can have punch like this. We can have punch like this, right? Uh, depend on the style. Uh, and um, what to do with our left arm, right? It's in, if we are talking about movies, even in some Wushu Taolu, um, we not always hold it here or here, not always, right? Sometimes we need it in, defenses, in a defensive position here, or we need to block one strike and then punch and uh, uh, kick uh, to, uh, and punch our opponent, right? So uh, let's do the block one. So what we do here uh, from Bushu Taolu, we basically just put our fist up. Yeah, maintaining our elbow on the same position. So it doesn't, doesn't, we don't do this stuff. We basically just, uh, if our arm is relaxed completely and just pointed straight, we just put the fist from down to up on the circular move. Okay, one more. This is what happens. And we need to make sure that the shoulder doesn't go up and we need to make sure the elbow doesn't go up. It's basically happen. Um, your elbow is the identificator of the level you need your uh, block on, right? So if you need it lower for some reasons, I don't know why, but let's say for the action choreography you need it lower, then your elbow should be lower, right? You cannot block low but keep
keep your elbow high. It doesn't work. So your elbow is like um, an anchor for you, right? So if it needs to be low, it's low. If it needs to be more high, it's high. If it needs to be parallel to the shoulder, it needs to be parallel. The elbow should be aligned with the shoulder, okay? So you choose, depend on the situation, depend on the choreography. But the motion basically goes the same way everywhere. What we have to, if we are talking about choreography, there would be a punch coming from another side and you will block and you will stop it. If we are talking about wushu, where we had like some motions like this, we mostly would stop it when, uh, when the line of the shoulder and the fist in the same position, right? Because if it's too far there, it, you might like injure your elbow you, or you injure your shoulder. Uh, if it's not enough, then the, the angle is not good or line is not good, right? So we need to reach the position where the elbow is aligned with our shoulder. And that would be the end of the move. And uh, for, the, um, uh, for the action and for the Ushu as well, uh, for Ushu Tralu performances, uh, we also have to add a bit of body move, where this is the, the core and um, uh, lower body work together, right? So this happened. If you don't add any body, this will happen. It's just motion with the hand. For the beginning, it's good to um, it's good to practice like this, just to feel the motion of the fist, because the, com the, the punch is coming from this side. We basically block ourselves, and oh, oops, sorry, we basically block the, the punch of the opponent, and then we strike with our, for example, right uh, punch, right? So one, two. We can just stay straight, for example, just stay straight and go one, two, E, one, two. Make sure that the uh, strike goes straight, okay? Because the opponent is there and his blow comes from this side. So if you block him from here, it means he's still in that position, right? And if we punch somewhere there, it, it doesn't make sense because we will get punched from him because he's not there, he's here, right? Um, if he's there, then probably block would be here and then we will punch him there. So most of the times the block and, and the punch are uh, in, the same, in the same angle in a way. It cannot be one here and one there. It doesn't work like this, at least for most of the, uh, most of the action that I did. So one, two, one, two. It can be on the other side, which is right arm and the punch, right? That punch. And uh, here, the thing is, uh, with the, if you transition it to the acting, it's going to be uh, how you react in this, right? You can do this a bit just to protect yourself. Um, and then blow from here with a huge extension, with the delivering the power there. It's all about acting it out. If we are talking about Wushu Taolu, sometimes uh, some people might make a style of, of just more, hmm, let's see, um, just more how it should be, like, in, like um, more aesthetically correct, let's say, more perfect. Uh, so in the movies, it cannot be worked because it's gonna be too robotic. Uh, for the movies, uh, there should be a bit of acting involved, meaning is, if you block, it means like, okay, I'm not, not afraid of the punch, but uh, I'm, I know there, there is a power coming, right? So I need to block it in a way where it's visible that the power was applied, right? And then the second one, uh, I need to reach the opponent. I need to get him. This is the this is the idea of all of that. For the wushu, it's not always the case, but it could be dependent on the style of the uh, performer. Yeah, it's all depend, I guess. So let's do a few uh, few block strike. Uh, yeah, block punch on the one arm. So it's like left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the same on other side. So we go right, left, right, left, nice, right, left, right, left. Even if you practice just standing straight, we have to make sure that this is not happening. Look, that here our core is still tense. We still a bit um, having our knees a bit bended. So we have a base, good base, but at the same time, time we have a bit of flexibility, right? If you start doing something like this, try. Try to make sure you don't do this, okay? Because in this position, uh, we are compromised. Our balance is off. 
and uh, our core is not tense, meaning we don't transition the power enough, and uh, and aesthetically it also doesn't look good. And the same not happening on the opposite direction, right? And the same not happening with the, our body weight. So we cannot practice standing like this, okay? And standing like this also doesn't work. And it's good. It's not very good for your hips. So we need to make sure, even if we practice without any stance, like specific stance, we need to have our balance in the middle, our legs a bit bended, and um, like amortization, like the one we have on the bike or whatever. Like if there is some bumps, we are secure, right? If somebody throws us, we are secure. Like if, if there is a throw comes, like we are secure, we are fine. We can find and regain our balance. Um, I guess that's about it. It's time. And um, thank you very much for practicing with me. And uh, I really, really love that people are joining and dedicated, dedicating their time. Even I think there is a lot of people from different time zones, right? Um, it's, it's amazing, really. It's amazing and uh, good job. Uh, please continue doing it. Um, unfortunately, we cannot do it like in real life, which is much, much, much more cool. Uh, but I mean, it's better than nothing in the situation that we have. And um, um, thank you, Wushu Federation, for putting this session on, right? And I guess we can transition to the questions and answers uh, part yes. of it. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, Mila. Now, as usual, we get into the QA session. If you have any, does anyone have any questions, please let me know. You can you may raise your hand and I can cancel the mute for you, or you simply type your question on the chat board. Give me your questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, from my perspective, I think it's very interesting to learn the application of some Wushu techniques in movies. Oh, we have one, we have Paul Alika here. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi, how, how are you? Are you? Going? <laughs> All good. Uh, yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks for putting on today. Um, my question is, when you don't feel like training, do you rely more on discipline or habits? Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? Discipline. <laughs> You know, actually, uh -huh. it's a very nice question because uh, I did realize after uh, after professional sport, um, I thought it would be easier because like having the 15 years of training all the time, it would be easy just to stick to the same routine. But then when you didn't have coach who is watching you, it's a bit like, hmm, <laughs> okay, so I can decide now. Hmm. But then um, it's all about priorities, right? And I do enjoy doing sports. And even if I don't, like in, in now, for example, if I don't feel like training in a gym, I still uh, can choose the routine outside, right? So if I just, I don't know, whatever is going on with my mood or feelings, uh, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do, go into the gym. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for a run. And then I'm going for a run. And then I'm uh, staying in the park and just do basically similar things that I would do in the gym. And then actually I will add more and more and more and just get in one after another one. So the, the best is just to uh, find the trick in your mind, which will allow you to start. And then you will get into it because you like to do sports, right? You do like how your body feels when you exercise. You do like how it feels after exercise. Uh, you do like how your brain gets uh, rewired when you focus on the martial arts or you focus on your body moves rather than on the problems or the, the mood that you get or whatever. So the, the, this, this moment of starting, uh, that's what I'm struggling with, uh, but that's what I feel the most important one to, to get over. Uh, so yeah, just priorities and focus and try to trick yourself and start it. Just, just go into it. It's for me. What works for you? Thank you. All right. Yeah, uh, for me, it's like my unofficial motto: show up, <laughs> just just rock up and and start. Like right now, I'm at the park. It's it's only six o'clock at night here in Australia, but it's pitch black. It's raining a bit, but it's like just just show up and start. And now it's not so bad, but at the beginning, it was like, oh, this sucks. So <laughs> it sounds like we're on the same page. Good job. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> 
good to see you. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have any questions? All right, it seems no more questions. Oh, we have a uh, genius here. Yeah. All right, oh. please. Yeah, go ahead. We can hear you now. Hey, Mira, how are you? How's it going, yes, Comfort sir. Sister? Good man. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Listen, I have a question. The basic yeah. that you just showed in the class, can those be applied to other Kung Fu styles like Eagle Claw and Wing Chun? Oh, nice question. Um, I don't know about Wing Chun too much because I think you are more professional in it than I am, right? I don't know about <laughs> professional. <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> um, honestly, I don't see it in Wing Chun, but I mean, no, no, no. It's actually, yes, it's also applicable. Yeah, I guess all of them. It's just for Wing Chun, it would be less, um, uh, how to say, the moves that I was showing, they're more uh, core, wide core moves, you know, like it's very rotating and everything. The things that I've seen in Wing Chun, they are more firm like this, right? Yeah, so, more center line. Sorry? It's more for the center line. Yes, yes. So for Wing Chun, it, it should be just adjust. I mean, I don't know how, but like from my mind, all the martial arts, they have kind of the same base. And then you just either widen the stance, widen the move, making it bigger uh, or more smaller, right? Oh. The same with the defense. Like you can grab someone out there, defend and attack, or you can defend yourself here and attack from here, right? So yeah. more or less kind of, I mean, not the same, but they're, they're inter interconnected and they then can be adjusted. Uh, but you have to know how to adjust it. I don't know how to adjust it to Wing Chun, and it's very nice. That's a good thing to work on. I would need to find some Wing Chun master. <laughs> All righty. Thanks for the answer. All right. Thank you. Um, as a matter of fact, our next lecture will talk about Wing Chun. If you have interest, please, uh, yeah, just on the side. All right, let's continue. Um, anyone else has any questions? Okay, um, due to the time limits, uh, we are about to finish. And uh, for your information, just I, like I mentioned, uh, on this Sunday, our next lecture will uh, be the uh, Mr. Liu Gongcheng. Uh, he will bring us a lecture. The topic will be Wing Chun, uh, Seal Ninto and simple techniques in the combat. And okay. in the end, thank, thank you uh, to our lecture uh, today is uh, Ms. Mala. And uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for setting it up and organizing it. And um, it, it was a pleasure, really pleasure. And thank you for what you're doing for spreading uh, different types of Wushu and martial arts and uh, keeping people uh, inspired uh, to to train and to uh, develop into it. Thank you very much. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Thank you, guys. <laughs>